Why in this world are people judged for being a virgin? Now that's an interesting question. Why are you judged for being a virgin? Um, probably for the same way. Like, you know, at the beginning of this passage, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, it's hard to stand in a world that wants to serve its own self. Uh, or, or wants to encourage self-service and all that kind of stuff. Um, and to stand for purity. So it's difficult. So, you know, if you're ashamed of being a virgin, um, or if you're embarrassed to being a virgin, um, I'm sad for you. Because uh, if you retained your virginity, you prevented, uh, how do you put it? You've kept something very special to give to someone that you love down the road. Um, masturbation is called self. That doesn't make sense. Oh. It's called self rape when rape is oh, not okay. willing. Why? Master, why is masturbation called self rape? I don't know why they would call it self rape. I guess you'd have to find who does that and ask them why. Why do you think when a pregnant girl, why do you think when a pregnant girl is having sex when she's pregnant? What do, you, what do you think? Okay, so what do I think about a pregnant girl having sex when she's pregnant? Well, I think if she's outside of being married to the guy, She's outside of the context that God designed sex to be had, to be to be had within, and so I would not encourage that. On the other hand, if you have a married woman and she's pregnant, it's okay to have sex with your husband when you're pregnant. Um, so, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Except it brings on labor, right? <laughs> Except it brings on labor, and it didn't with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> telling you anyway but with some people it can some women it can what is necking does anyone need me to explain that yeah. intensive kissing yeah yeah it's intensive kissing um, French necking is when you slip each other the tongue right you use your tongue as well as your lips right yeah Oh come on! What is what is um, bondage? Bondage means like having handcuffs on. And when when a when a pastor or a Bible teacher talks about bondage, or if you read in your Bible about bondage, what it's talking about is spiritual bondage. And so oftentimes what happens is you, you people, some preachers will talk about getting into bondage to sin. So think about an addict. An addict is in bondage. They are tied to their addiction. They can't get loose. They don't have a physical set of handcuffs on, but they sort of have a spiritual set of handcuffs on. Uh, and they can't just let, let go of it. Um, so, um, and what do I think of bondage? I think I know somebody who can break the bondage, and his name is Jesus. We were not created to be in bondage. So when you actually think about why were you created, you guys know why you were created? You were actually created for freedom. Um, and that's one of the things that God wants to bring back in your life. Uh, now, interestingly enough, it's not freedom to sin because freedom to sin <laughs> gets you back into bondage, right? Um, you're, we're created to live free of guilt, free of self-hatred. We're created to, to be free to experience the love of God and each other. That's what we're created for. But then the Bible says, the devil came into the, uh, the garden and he tempted Adam and Eve. He said, do your life your way. And sin came in. And the moment sin came in, we began to be, uh, to be in bondage to, uh, to ungodly things. And we lost our freedom. So what God always wants to do is he always wants to bring the freedom back. And, and with your sexuality too, um, there's going to come a day, if you abuse your sexuality, there's going to come a day when you you just live with a lot of pain because of what you've done to yourself. And you know, sometimes as a young person, it's hard to understand that because to you, life's young, you know, you got lots of years ahead of you, you're tough, whatever the heck else, you know, there's all kinds of fun to be had. 
But there comes a day, and you can talk to some of the old guys around me, like, there comes a day when you realize, you know, I've done enough to myself that I'm tired, I'm tired of living in pain. And, and you begin to realize the damage you have done to yourself. When you come to that point, the one you want to call out to is Jesus. Because he can bring the freedom back. Uh, he can heal uh, what's been done. Why does porn cause a relationship to crumble down to nothing? You know, porn's an interesting thing. Jesus told his disciples one day, he said, if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've as good as had sex with her in the flesh. Uh, now, you didn't totally write, but in your heart you did. And, and so oftentimes when, when we look at that, because Jesus, he was always very intense about the heart motives behind something. So when we talk about sexual things, you've already heard me talk about this. What's the problem with the way the world uses sex so often? It's selfish, right? So we take young women, we make, well, take young men too, and we make porn films and stuff. We turn them into a chunk of meat to be used for other people's gratification. We dehumanize them. God hates that. So what's the problem with porn? Porn is basically a form of, adul of adultery. So when you get somebody, and, and this really impacts women, I think, more than men. Men tend to shrug it off a little more, like, you know, like, you know, if you got, uh, how do you put it? You know, if my wife was looking at porn, I'd be going like, whatever, get, get done with it, right? If I was looking at porn and she caught me, she'd be going, what? You betrayed our, our marriage, right? Women tend to get really uh, more wounded by porn. And it is because um, it's, a, it's a type of adultery. It's a spiritual adultery. It's an adultery in the heart. And so they feel like the, uh, the relationship has been betrayed. And that tends to throw defensive walls up. They push away. They're hurt. They don't want to be hurt anymore. And so the, the relationships tend to fall apart. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions? All right. We actually demonstrated that uh, last week. For those of you who were here, you remember the t-shirt image? Yeah. Right? So it says that very clearly, and Jesus himself says it, right? That the two become one flesh. And uh, essentially, you join yourself to that person. And you join both physically, but you also join spiritually. So there's another passage that talks about how... Uh, talks about you as a temple of the Holy Spirit. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And it talks about, you know, your person is a temple. So when you join your, your temple to somebody else, you can share spiritual baggage. You can share spiritual good stuff, or you can also share spiritual bad stuff with each other. And so when you have a person who's slept, you know, with 20 or 30 people, you know, uh, the image that sort of comes is that you've pulled yourself apart, you've ripped yourself apart, and you can carry baggage from your previous relationships into your new relationships. And, and so...